Let's see. Oh, I have 100 subscribers. Hey, welcome to my lab. Today I will be doing an Astral Chimera doll for Kiro's workshop Open Collab. I absolutely love his concept collabs. They are always very creative and challenging, so I wanted to give a try. Chimera is a monster from Greek mythology composed of different animal parts. Also, Chimera is genetic term of an organism composed from cells with distinct genomes. Usually these cells are from the same species, so this is not that creepy as it sounds. In this challenge, we are tackling mythological meaning of chimera, and prompt is to make a chimera doll based on your Chinese, Mayan and Western zodiac sign. I was born on June 2nd, 1991, so my animals are goat, squirrel and Gemini. Gemini. Twins. <laughs> For this challenge, Gemini and Bigro are really tough because they are not animals. Okay, Libra, you are worse. I am keeping my fingers crossed for all Libras doing this challenge. Ah, ah, and I know what you are thinking. Gemini are twins and you are already making chimera from two animals, so you are already have twins. I have in my stock box bicephalic monster high doll, Pearl and Perry. I could use them, but none of my animals are snake. It would be too much work to change them into goat squirrel creature and, to be honest, it would be not worth it. I love that they are snake because bicephaly is seen in snakes and changing their species so drastically would destroy them. So I decided to make double-faced doll with one face being goat and second squirrel. I want to incorporate Gemini sign by showing duality and making angelic and sweet squirrel with demonic and evil goat sister. I got this inspiration from Sanzeya from Gemini Sun Saga who had two faces on his helmet. So let's begin! For my canvas I took Operetta doll. She deserves more from doll customizers, she is so pretty. I'll be also using this stiff budget Draculaura. I have no use for her body but for her face. Oh yes, you know what it means. <laughs> but first, let's take these girls to my Murin Spa, where each doll is treated like queen. Our facility offers multiple services like new haircut, decapitation, brain surgery, face removal, Ears correction and relaxing face mask with pure acetone. Murin Spa. Everything for dolls who wants a new start. This is how they look after returning from spa. I hope that they enjoy it. You can see clear difference in quality of sculpting between a regular price doll and cheap budget one. Operetta has got very detailed mold, while Draculaura looks kinda like Tinky Winky in this shape. Ugh, now I cannot unseen it. For now I'll be calling her Tinky Winky and you will suffer with me. I glued the cut after brain surgery with my teeny tiny super glue, it looks like Murin Spa doesn't cover sutures, and using my hot glue gun I gave her Tinky Winky Voldemort parasite on the back of her head. Then, with huge struggle, I installed jewelry wire for a scaffold for future horns and ears. I'll be giving them two pairs of ears, gold and squirrel ones, as well two pairs of horns. Here they are ready for the sculpting. Gold sister looks intricate and Tinky Winky is still creepy. I took magic sculpt to part epoxy clay and after mixing equal part of A and B component, I started to build their face. On the first layer of magic sculpt, I fix Tinky Winky on their head and make general shape of their ears. If you have complicated piece to sculpt, you don't want to make everything on the one layer. Fresh magic sculpt is very soft and goopy and it is hard to make many elements at once. 
To be fair, I could skip making ears on this layer. Probably they would be more even if I make them after curing the head. On the next layer I make their horns. And I took my gloves because they annoyed me as hell. You can take gloves while sculpting with epoxy clay if you don't have allergies and of course you must clean your hands with soap thoroughly when you are done using it. And to be sure that you can, at that evening I lost water in pipes because of the fast flooding after Hurricane Ida. Luckily I still had some water in my kettle. I connected her horns and nose to give her more animal features. Goats have got very flat face after all. So far so good. Let's see how Tinky Winky feels. I am still not ready for her. At the next layer I smoothed goat horns and started to give her a little hair in base of the horns and more details to make her more interesting. Oh my, I love her! <laughs> this blank spot on her forehead just screamed for a rhinestone, so I added the biggest which I had using more clay. It was still not enough for me, so I started to add some more fur to her temples. First I wanted to mimic them with sculpting tool, but results sucked, so I did this like before hair by hair. Before next layer I sanded some of the transitions to make them smoother. Then I added more fur to the insides of the goat's ears. Okay, I cannot neglect Tinky Winky forever, but she's so creepy. In my mind the goat sister was evil and squirrel good, but reality shows opposite. I had few tries on her face, but nothing worked good. I ended with these two vampire teeth and snout, which I am still regretting. I wanted to give her more animal features like I made with gold, but squirrels don't have that prominent snout. Although she is resembling Tinky Winky no more, I am still calling her like that. <laughs> I don't plan to give her as much details like gold sister, but I cannot leave her blank. They will not have any hair because we are normalizing bald dolls here. Squirrel face is not that inspiring, so when I don't know what to do, I am making squirrels. Yes, you've seen this last time. I give her cheeks these fury nightmares and I fillet her ears with fur. She also got rhinestone on her forehead.
And yes, finally I am removing this disaster from her cheeks. I wish I also took her snout. And here they are. I am done with sculpting and I like how they turn out. The last thing which I want to do is to deal with Operetta scar. As you see, I didn't cover it with clay. I want them to have a scar, but I want it to be more organic. You know, Zuko style. So I covered it with hot glue. Time for some paint! Off camera I gave her solid white base coat with my brand new airbrush. Next I painted her purple, similar to Operetta original skin color, but slightly more muted. Ah! Always close your paint bottles unless you deal with puddle of paint. And here they are, all purple. Paint turned out to be little grainy, but I love it. It gave her skin more texture and dimension. Speaking of dimension, time for body blushing. I darkened the base color and sprayed the desired part of her body. Again, I got some minor splotches, but they look like beauty marks, and I like them. They are very random, which makes them organic. I did similar with highlights, but you cannot see what I am doing, because I am covering everything with my hand. I have to work on camera angle while I am filming airbrushing. When I was satisfied with shadows, I gave her scar a light pink base coat, followed by bright red color. I painted with brush each corners and crevices which airbrush couldn't reach. I protected her face with tissue and sprayed her horns with ivory paint. Again I made touch-ups with brush. And some gold tips for fancy finish. I gave Tinky Winky more red details because squirrels can be red. Using brush I painted all swirls on her head and made some touch-ups of camera. Here they are, time for face-ups! I sprayed them with Duraclear Ultra Matte Varnish diluted with water to seal the paint job and prepare the surface for face-ups. I started from Tinky Winky because I am less excited to work on her. I deepened shadows with pastels and sketched her eyes and brows. She'll get closed eyes. My inspiration for her is Penny Talpa by Dolmotion. Penny looks super cute and I was aiming for this for Tinky Winky, so I give her squirrel teeth and uh, white freckles. I should stop here with them, because they kinda start to look like smallpox. <coughs> this is happening when you are not vaccinated. Her face still has a lot of potential, so I gave her strong makeup and red lipstick. When I was happy with the pastels and pencils, I switched to the acrylics. I took off masking tape, which I used for covering her rhinestone. It wasn't satisfied pill, I still need to make some touch-ups. I painted her teeth, defined eyelashes and brows, and added some more details.
I took purple, pink and white Mika powders, mixed them with water and paint with them her freckles, giving her more astral galaxy vibes. I did similar thing with Vanish and her tattoo, but then I mixed Mika powders with paint, which was unnecessary because paint was dulling the powders. You can dissolve Mika powders in water because they are already colored, but the best will be glossy varnish, which will also seal the powders. I had to seal them separately off camera. Okay, now she has got galaxy smallpox. I hope that she feels better with it. I like sparkles, so I add Mika powders also to her eyelids. And I finally understood why people are not glossing those eyes, because it does look terrible on the photos. In vivo it is more settled, I swear. Here she is. I proudly present you Tinky Winky Voldemort Parasite with galaxy smallpox and hollow eyes. She's pure evil now. I am done with her. Time for Goat Sister. As previously, I started with pastels and sketching eyes. Her face is already busy, so her makeup will not be that strong like Tinky Winkies. Her eyes will be open. I'm just following the mode since Operetta has got very defined eye sculpt. I am not giving her eyebrows because in my concept her horns are like her eyebrows. I went for paints very quickly this time. I filled her eyes with white and paint dark brown her sculpted fur. For details on her horns I used gold. I give her pale blue eyes. Hmm, eyes are mirror of the soul and she is terrified with her life. Let's do this again. This time I used darker blue and make her irises bigger. It already looks better. Goats have got characteristic horizontal pupils, so she'll get this as well. I want her left eye to be blind, so I am giving her a white pupil. Finally, I defined her scar with oranges and reds. Now I just need to add gloss to her eyes, lips and scar and face-ups are done! Time to complicate my life even more and make her outfit! I have this double-sided material which will be perfect for what I have in my mind. So my goal is to make double-sided dress. Right side will be dress for gold and left for Tinky Winky. I carefully planned my seams and started from sewing the bodies. Next, I added the lace to the black side. Now I can cover these seams. If your material is ok with glue, use it. This one didn't want to glue very well, so stitches were my only option. However, later I changed my mind and uh, redo these stitches. I folded material in half and connected it with another stitch. Now I like it. Next I sew the skirt. I wanted seam to be on the front, so sewing it together was pretty challenging. Then I closed front piece to the half of the length and sewed the lace on the black side. Then I finished the seam on the grey side, just like I made with bodies.
Off camera, I finish the bell part. I put eyelids to the bodies and started to work on the butt situation. This was weak part of my concept. I sewed the darts to the back of her skirt, but it made closure very tight. And yeah, eyelids were coming out all the time. Later I glued them. Black side was okay, but grey looked unfinished, so I changed my plans and cut access of the material, doing all eyelid closure. Not the best, but functional and looks acceptable from both sides. I'm okay with it. I gave Tinky Winky chain headpiece. I was inspired by beautiful headpiece by Susika. Plus, after vanish I'm in chain smooth. Also, I am putting this black chain with loop across her head. This will be fastening her veil. Tinky Winky also got her false lashes. In my mind, Tinky Winky and Goat are fighting all the time with each other for domination under their common body. Defeated sister face is covered by veil, which I made using this black organza. I gathered it tightly and sewed to it a jewelry hook. Now I can attach the veil to the head. Off camera I cleaned the seam and here it is. For her shoes I just took these Rochelle Goyle boots and painted them silver. Phew, it was long project, but we are finally ready for the final assembly. So, here is my astral chimera. Meet my beautiful twins, Goat and Squirrel Tinky Winky Voldemort Parasite with Galaxy Smallpox and Hollow Eyes. What do you think about them? Which face do you like the most? To be honest, Tinky Winky is not my favorite. I prefer Goat. Thank you, Ciro, for this great concept collab. I am waiting for more challenges. See you all in the next video. Bye!